Hi, I'm Gary Stockton. I'm a county extension agent with the LSU Ag Center doing horticulture work in Lincoln and Bienville Parishes. Today I'm here at the Red River Research Station and most of the work done here is on row crops. Here I'm in a soybean field. We've got cotton, we've got corn also here at the station that they do research on. And there's also some beef cattle and forage work. But today we're going to take a look at our Northwest Region Super Plants Demonstration Garden. Up here by the front gate, you'll find our 8,600 square foot Northwest Region Super Plant Demonstration Garden. We have both annual and perennial selections that are found on the LSU Ag Center Super Plant Garden Program. In these gardens, you'll find plants of all types from trees to shrubs to perennials and to the real showcase we have, the bedding plants for the annual color. Here we have Belinda's Dream Roses. They're a type of drift rose. They, they moderately like water, so they don't like a lot of wet feet on their roots. One of the fascinating things I find out about this, when, whenever we need to deadhead these roses, instead of coming out here with pruning shears, it's simple to give it an extra week. These things snap right off. We can deadhead, and when we deadhead, it allows for the new growth to come in. They enjoy full sun, and they can grow to about five feet tall. As you can see here, I'm surrounded by these beautiful pink drift roses. Drift roses will get to be about three foot tall, and their growth habit is kind of low spreading, so they can really fill out a bed well. Uh, roses tend to want about a moderate amount of water. They don't like to have the wet feet on them, and these will bloom profusely throughout the spring, summer, and fall. Hi, on this plant we've got verbena. This particular variety is called Homestead Purple. It's a great mounding plant. One of the things we've got to be careful about with verbena, it doesn't like as much water as some of our other landscape plants out here. The roots can rot on us real quick if we don't do a light watering when we do that. Verbena will grow to a height of about 24 inches and spread out evenly and look beautiful in your landscape. Here we have Balea. They have a beautiful vibrant purple flower on them. They, they, they have a mounding type growth habit. These things can get up to 60 inches tall, but it's rare that we see in this area that they get much taller than two and a half feet. Uh, they moderately like water and they take full sun. Now this jungle of flowers I'm coming to now, this is Cleome. It's commonly known spider flower. It has these vibrant purple flowers throughout the summer and the fall. These things can get anywhere from two feet to five feet and they prefer full sun to partial sun. Hey, here we have Angelinia. This is the Sierra mix. That's why you notice the different colors that we have in here. They're more commonly known as our summer snaps. These kind of things can get up to 18 to 20 inches in height. They need light water. We don't want to put too much water on them. They grow in a mounded plant habit, and, and they will start blooming in late spring and continue to bloom if well taken care of through late summer. Good morning. My name is John Monzingo. I'm a horticulture agent for Claiborne and Webster Parish. Behind me and to my right is the Shoal Creek Vitex. As you can see, it has a pretty purple flower. It's a fast-growing uh, plant that needs full sun and can reach heights up to 15 feet. If you're looking for a good landscaping tree that grows fast and can reach heights up to 40 to 50 feet is a willow oak. Around here in North Louisiana, it's often, often called a pin oak because the leaves look like a fountain pen, but it makes an excellent tree for your home landscaping desires. Another tree that we have for landscaping and is great for fall foliage is our sugar maple. It's another fast growing tree that provides excellent shade and in the fall it has beautiful red and yellow leaves. Our next tree that we have in our garden is the Sweet Bay Magnolia. It has your typical white magnolia looking flower and it needs full sun to partial sun and is a fast growing tree. The green shrub that you see here in front of me is the Shishi Gajira Camellia. It has is a slower growing plant, but it has a beautiful fall bloom that you can enjoy late in the year. As you see here, this is a start of the bud for the blooms. Hi, I'm Mark Wilson, Regional Horticulture Specialist for the Northwest Region. I'm here right now to show y'all a salvia. This is the Arctic Blaze series sometimes referred to as summer sage. It gets about 18 inches tall, 
and about 14 inches wide at full growth. It needs about a medium to mild watering habit, so it can handle a little bit of extra water, but prefers to be a little left dry. It can do about zero degrees as far as hardiness, so it, there is potential for this to come back every year, even though it be planted as an annual. And it grows in a upright pattern and will continue to flower through spring all the way through autumn. This is one of our two Kauai series terrinas we have here at the station. This one's blue and white. They all grow about eight inches by eight inches by eight inches, height, width, and spacing. Uh, they are a full sun to partial sun plant. will bloom from late spring all the way through our summer into our autumn, depending on how cool we get, can make it almost into our beginning of our winter period. One of our most common weed issues in our gardens here in Louisiana, and actually across the entire world, is nutsedge. Now you'll see here what happens if it's left unaltered, it'll just continuously grow mound up and take over your flower bed. Now you can see we can spray it and it will start to die back using a selective chemical that you have to just uh, reference. But the idea is you really want to spray it when it's about this size. If you allow it to get much taller, those, those chemical reactions don't really do much work and it really needs to be hand pulled. We have another common issue, which is Virginia buttonweed, another very big issue we have to focus on in landscape beds, which we'll show you next. Now this right here, if you see growing underneath this terrina, is Virginia buttonweed. It's really distinctive with its small little white flowers, also seen commonly in our, our lawn systems. The best thing for this is either to hand pull it in your flower beds or spot treat with a non-selective herbicide. Be careful though not to spray the plants you want to keep because it'll kill all of them. What we have in front of us is Ipomea margarita, commonly known as a sweet potato vine. It gets about 24 inches long by about 24 inches height. The key to remember though, this is a vining or running type plant. So in order to get the mass that you see here, you'll need multiple plants to give a mounting effect. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a bunch of little runners. The beauty part about this is it's a low watering plant, great heat tolerance for our summers here, and it'll continue with this beautiful color from spring all the way into our first frost. What we have right here beside me and in front of me are two great examples of our sun patients. They're actually impatients that they've been bred to be a full sun plant. Uh, these get about 20 to 32 inches tall by by about 40 inches wide, they are going to form this nice mounting pattern you see here. This is a good collection of them all grouped up. They're a compact plant that will flower anywhere between spring all the way through autumn, giving you this great color. Now, you will see on some varieties uh, an issue called bacterial spot. You'll see it on some of these white varieties here next to me. It's nothing to be concerned about. If you don't wish it, you can spray a simple bacterial fungicide, depending on which spots you have. It'll take it right out. But overall, it does not hurt the vigor of the plant. What you have next to us here is Asclepius. It's a yellow silk variety, commonly known as milkweed. This will get about 48 inches high by about 32 inches wide. It's a wonderful pollinator plant because it does attract some of our, our larval stages for our butterflies. It'll bloom all the way through our season from early spring all the way till through fall. And you will see, if you have a garden like this, which you have, we've seen today, this will attract a large number of your insects like aphids to one plant along with your predator insects like ladybugs. So it's a great bait crop which we could use in a landscape area. What you see right here is a series of about three different types of lichens that are growing on this tree. A lichen is just a cytobacteria and an algae growing together. And while they looked harmful for this plant, they actually aren't doing anything. They're just using the tree here as a host to hold on to. What this shows horticulturally speaking though is that there's something else wrong with this tree. That's what we need to look for. And in this case, it's totally showing a lack of fertility and some recovery from a wound that you can see on the side here where my, my hand is, where something has hit it when it was younger, causing the whole plant to grow a little slower, thus the lichens are holding on. The best way to think of lichens is almost like dead skin cells. If it's all healthy and the system is running smooth, the tree is growing properly, they flake off every day and thus you'll never see them grow. What we have here is our flamethrower coleus, one of our new super plants this year. This particular variety is salsa rojo, now you will see this is a, also commonly known as a sun coleus, and unlike our other coleus, Hannah, this one actually does flower. These coleuses will grow about 18 to 24 inches tall by about 16 to 24 inches wide. They will be an upright to mounting pattern or growth habit, and they'll last until we get to about 50 degrees or, or our first frost. They will start to flower. If you're worried about the flowering spikes, they're simple. Just pop them off, and it'll encourage more foliar growth. Another wonderful coleus we have here at the station is the Hannah coleus. This coleus, unlike the flamethrower, will survive until our first frost and does not produce a flower. It'll get about the same height, ranging around 20 inches tall by about 16 inches wide. It is a wonderful full sun or partial shade plant and will have an upright to mounting pattern. Thank you for watching today. We hope you enjoyed our tour of the Northwest Regional Superplants Garden. 
you have any questions about any of the plants you saw today or any horticulture questions at all, feel free to contact your local county agent. Thank you for joining us.